we have changed our patient acquisition model mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. our community health promoters mm. Mm. so uh, how how patients will get into the system, system has changed <coughs> has changed, has changed. Okay. Mm-hmm. the financing mm-hmm. mechanism is changing mm-hmm. because we are saying that there has to be equity mm. at the point of contribution yes. and equality <laughs> at the point of care <laughs> Hello, welcome to the One Health Lens podcast, where we have healthy conversations about public health, global health, and the road to universal health coverage. I'm your host, Dr. Diana Wangari Gitao. And And I am Simon Moshara Kegodu. You know, before I've been accused of not, um, what, addressing what we're going to talk about in the beginning, so I'll say today we have another important guest, as always. Um, and we will be talking about the role of the private sector on this road to universal health coverage. So I'll have him introduce himself. Go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. <coughs> My name is Dr. Tim Theuri. Mm-hmm. I have the privilege of serving as the CEO of Kenya Healthcare Federation. Yeah. We are the health board of KEPSA. Uh, that's Kenya Private Sector Alliance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we take care of the entire value chain in health for all non-state actors mm-hmm. um without wanting many stones thrown at me mm. is uh if the private sector was a ministry yeah and possibly, be the guys. And possibly yeah. uh, be called waziri but <laughs> 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 because the good the bad sure. uh all all, all land on our desk yeah. and uh <clears throat> i think it's a privilege yeah. uh, to have visibility yeah. over sectors important as this yes. uh, from where we stand. So the politics aside, I, I, I really consider it a privilege. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is why we have tried finding you two, three times. I, I have called. Did not I have to messaged. Bring that up. I did not I... expect to bring that up. <laughs> We are here. We are here. We are That's, here. The that's the important thing. That's the important thing. Yeah, Kupata waziri ni ngumu. See, no, in fact, that's what I was going <laughs> We are here. We are, I we are tell here. you, yeah. yeah. At the doctor's part, of, uh, at the dentist part of the strike, we always hear medical doctors. Are dentist part of the strike? Um, yes, I'd say yes. Yes. And uh, it's from what I can see. Yes. Uh, elsewhere, I serve as the president of Kenya Dental Association. Yes. Mm. <laughs> and uh, that is where my I was extracted from. Mm. Uh, before, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before, before, before I came to you. Yes. And it's uh, it's one of the jobs I have loved doing. Yeah. I am on my final term. Uh, I think one one and a half years, uh, give mm-hmm. or take, remaining. Yeah. Uh, it's been a fantastic journey, mm-hmm. I must say. Mm. And uh, I can't wait for to, to hand over now to the next team to see yeah. what they have in store. Yeah. And uh, now watch from retirement yes uh, on that side yeah uh, but yes mm. yeah absolutely i foresee a future where you're in one of these committees advice uh, advisory yeah anyway but <laughs> uh, <coughs> so private sector right yeah. the role of private sector maybe let's start with painting a picture right in terms of just health seeking behavior and also where majority of Kenyans mm. seek services, right? Because most people always imagine, and when we have these conversations, we tend to be focused on public mm. sector, yeah. right? Mm. Because in the strike, it's the public uh, um, facilities that have been crippled and whatnot. What's the percentage of Kenyans who seek care in private facilities? Do we know that number? Um. I can extrapolate it mm-hmm. and uh, how I would do it would be from the health facility mm-hmm. census report that mm-hmm. was released, mm-hmm. it indicated 54% of our bed capacities in private it's sector. Private mm-hmm. sector. Uh, I like calling them non-state actors. Mm-hmm. We have bastardized mm. the <laughs> private sector. Private sector. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I say that is what, yeah. what, what the moment I say private sector, what comes out is a for-profit uh, yeah, side. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, profits are not bad. Mm. Mm. It's what right. you do with them yeah. that is good or bad. Mm. And uh, it is also very unfair to mm. say that uh, that is the only side of health we mm. know when it comes to state actors. Mm. We have for-profit side, we have the not-for-profit side, yes. and uh, we have faith-based, we mm. have CBOs, we mm. have NGOs, yeah. um, and uh, doctors who in studio like... Yeah. Yeah, like <laughs> 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 we're all uh, in the mix with, with, with yeah, zero brilliant. journalism training <laughs> but in studio 
So uh, <laughs> I trained journalists. Yeah, so we we, we th- th- that's how I look at it. Yeah. Um and uh, 54% of that bed capacity is in yeah. private sector and non-state actors. From mm. the economic mm. survey of 2023. Yes. That is about 94,215. Yeah. and uh, the average year on year increase is around about 2.7%. Yeah. Mm. We have about 10,000 I think 900 and something baby courts as mm. well. Mm. So possibly 5,000 non state actors. Mm. Uh the private sector sees uh what I would call a higher patient per bed per unit time turnover. Mm. Mm. So okay. The number of patients who are going through a bed mm. is slightly higher mm, in yes. the private sector. Yeah. Now we may not enjoy bed occupancy as high as government mm. because mm. the government side has higher bed occupancy. Yes. So back of the envelope math would put it at maybe mm. a conservative figure of uh, 54 to mm. 60%. Mm, yeah. uh, but I think once we get proper data it should be higher. Mm. When you look at countries of Kenya's profile mm. in Africa that's South Africa maybe Ghana Nigeria those are the those mm. are those are the ones that consider our peers mm. um further north Egypt mm. Morocco may not necessarily fit mm. our bill and mm. it's because one of their they have a highly militarized culture yeah mm. uh, because of just the way their civilizations developed yeah. and also their cultural extraction allows for the populations there to be shepherded a little faster mm. than in the south yes now those countries are mentioned mm. uh if you look at south africa though a higher formalized economy than ours mm. we have about 75% mm. of health happening in mm. non government yeah, side mm. so kenya is of a similar profile so we have a significant amount mm. what does that mean for the country it means that whatever the ministry of health is doing mm-hmm. is should should remove that bias mm. of mm. Public, public sector oriented it is a good mm. thing to be public sector yeah. oriented don't get it wrong yeah. uh, when i say it but our reality is a little different mm. so how do we make it work for mm. everyone mm. is a better question to mm. ask mm. now uh private sector is known for consistency mm. and quality of care mm. efficiency and efficiency Yeah. and those are things we could leverage on what are mm. the lessons that yeah. private sector has that government could pick on and what are the lessons on the other side mm. that are there that we could easily pick on yeah. how do we democratize that space so that care is one easily accessible mm. two affordable mm. but also our results and outcomes mm. are repeatable mm. 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 that is a better question mm. to ask mm. uh, yeah I mean <clears throat> we've been having mm. multiple conversations on universal health coverage this rollout mm. of shave sha mm. and all that yeah. right <clears throat> and I don't want to sound biased because obviously everyone comes with their own view right and many people have said we are not ready right we are not ready it's one thing to have the policy to have the regulations in place but quite a few have expressed the opinion which the more i listen to people mm. the more i get the sense that at a certain point because what the average common not even average or common but the kenyan citizen what they expect or at least what they had from political speak was that once all this uh, uhc is ruled out and we say this is the day even we contribute forget the amount you are contributing right start contributing to shift we register we register again doesn't matter right we might complain but we'll do it what i'm expecting the day i am told now your card for shift is active i'm expecting to walk up to a facility and get services right that's what the kenyan citizen at least understands right because that's what had been promised that there'll be free care universal health coverage so it won't matter in fact even to add a layer to that is there's now an understanding that it might be also you could go to private sector forget level 5 level 4 mm-hmm. and all that talk right there's all this right yet from a Kenyan perspective they might, they might not understand that it won't it's not a factor of just walking in just because you've been told or you've heard somewhere on a radio right so then from a what, first what's your view what's what's happening you know <laughs> from uh, as one uh, ziri from where you see what call call me team that call me team that works um, yeah. i have many thoughts 
Mm-hmm. One, this is our third stab at UHC as a country. So I've had. And uh, it just shows we are a resilient lot. And there is a lot of willingness to get things right. Yes. The current attempt is but rest on four things. Mm-hmm. Uh, digitization of services to ensure that our logistics are taken care of. Health and when digital. I say logistics, yeah. mm-hmm. it's not in the uh, conventional sense mm-hmm. of logistics. Mm-hmm. It is how are we efficiently moving things from point A mm-hmm. to B. Okay. It could be product, mm-hmm. it could be information, mm-hmm. it could be people, mm-hmm. it could be policy. Mm-hmm. How efficiently are we doing that? Okay. Mm-hmm. The second thing is human resources for health mm-hmm. as the second pillar. Mm-hmm. Um, it is impossible to do this without the people who mm-hmm. have the skill to mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. And uh, the third thing is uh, commodity, mm-hmm. uh, security, mm-hmm. which is a very important mm-hmm. component. Mm-hmm. In 2021, mm-hmm. I don't believe uh, there was an attempt to understand what is in, what is causing the increase in cost of healthcare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What came out is on the at the point of financial discharge. Mm-hmm. So when a discharge happens, mm-hmm. three things happen. Mm-hmm. There's a medical discharge. Mm-hmm. The doctor yes. says go home. Ah, then there's a physical discharge. Uh, the have you hours you wait? <laughs> have you paid, <laughs> or has someone paid for you, uh, yes. or is it in the house? Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a physical discharge or the financial mm. discharge. Mm. And then there is a physical discharge. You mm. can actually now leave the mm. facility once mm. those two have been cleared. So at the point of physical discharge, you mm. find that commodities accounted for about 31 to 38 mm-hmm. percent of the cost of that bill. So guys working out with drugs and whatnot. Yes. Yeah, so the okay. components, the uh, the pharmaceutical components and the non-pharmaceutical mm-hmm. items that mm-hmm. were used to treat you mm-hmm. constitute that much. Ah, okay. And what we found out, a significant portion of that was taxes. Mm-hmm. So it is important we review our tax regime mm-hmm. when it comes to healthcare. Mm-hmm. If indeed mm-hmm. we are going to say whatever mm-hmm. we are trying to do mm-hmm. is something we want to achieve. Okay. Now I roll you back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so commodity security is a very important thing because mm-hmm. if you are not able to source uh, affordably mm-hmm. and ensure that logistically they are getting to the right place at the right time, mm-hmm. most of the time, uh, it becomes very difficult because mm-hmm. How I view it is uh, as an enterprise mm-hmm. and the link between you being, let me say, profitable, de- uh, uh, delivering your items mm. is how fast are you able to, mm. to, to move them around. Yeah. So it is our third step mm. at ensuring that all those things come together. Mm. And the fourth and final thing is healthcare financing. Mm. This is a conversation that has been hot uh, the last five years yeah. and uh, it's, be, it's become a continental conversation mm. and... Uh, of course, a global conversation. Yeah. My thoughts are mm. the best time to introduce anything is at the beginning of any regime. And that is what the current dispensation has opted to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you're introducing changes, it's good to have a change management mm. plan. plan. Mm-hmm. So if, 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 if the changes are going to be sweeping or mm. drastic or even affect a significant mm. portion of the value chain, mm-hmm. it's important to see and map out how the, the effect of that yeah. and the ripple effect because the, the effect is often direct and indirect. Mm. So you need a change management person next to you yeah. as you're walking this journey. Yeah. So it's yeah. very important. And part of that change management is how are we communicating <laughs> the changes we want to bring. Mm. Does Mona Inch, as you say, mm. know mm. what it means to have yeah. that card? Mm. Do they have visibility of the benefits package? What 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 is important for them? Mm. Any healthcare system that mm. is worth its salt mm. uh, should be keen to optimize mm. the relationship between a patient and the doctor. Mm, yes. Because if you to ask the Monenchi Apo is mm. uh, when they go to hospital, what do they want? Mm. Two things. Mm. I want to see the doctor yeah. and I want to see and I want to live with medication mm. if any. Yeah. And have labs yeah. done if yes. any. Mm. So the system should be optimized around these two people mm. and that interaction. Mm. Yeah. When you go to fuel, mm. uh, for those who have that privilege, mm. because not everyone has that privilege, Simon, how much is fuel right now? <coughs> 199. Okay. Point one. Point one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So with 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 yeah. say give or take two hundred yeah. shillings, yeah. Yeah. if you walk to a petrol station, yeah. you should get a little of petrol. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's unleaded. Yeah. How it comes there? Mm. Who imported that man? I really don't. Uh, who uh, mm. Kipto uh, mm. former school mate? When he's <laughs> when he's sitting down yeah. and deciding these are the prices together with his team, <laughs> yeah. When they put an okay, yeah. do you want to know? No. 
not really. You may not be concerned. It's important to know, yeah, but, but the logistical component of mm, it mm. is something you may not necessarily want to be yeah. involved mm. with. Yeah. The same should happen for health. Yeah. Okay. When I walk into a hospital, mm. whoever is doing IT, how medicines came from the Kemsa warehouse mm. to to the what the order refill <laughs> rate was mm. is something I wouldn't want to know at the yeah. point of care. Yeah. Yeah. As as a manager, as mm. a policy expert, mm. it's something that of course I'm keen about. Yeah. Yeah. But the, it's it's something we shouldn't burden the money with. Yeah. Now, when that interaction is not efficient, mm. then those things speak come mm. point of conversation yes. uh, it's taking too long to get a pre-authorization mm. uh, i have to wait uh, another one day i'm sick i'm mm. worried mm. i'm possibly the only breadwinner yes. or i'm the breadwinner who's taking care of the person mm. who's sick how many man hours are we wasting yes. how many school uh, days are we wasting for our mm. children mm. so those are the things now that now people begin mm. to account for yeah. in not those those may not be the words that are running through their minds mm. but those worries are similar yes we have changed our patient acquisition model mm-hmm. through our mm. community health promoters. Mm. Mm. So uh, how how patients will get into the system, system has changed. <coughs> has changed. Has changed. Okay. Mm-hmm. The financing mm. mechanism is changing mm-hmm. because we are saying that there has to be equity mm. at the point of contribution yes. and <coughs> equality at the point of care. <laughs> hey. <laughs> explain uh, further exactly <laughs> so <laughs> equity <laughs> equity <words>. is uh, <laughs> you look like a millionaire you should give us more <laughs> the guy is not talking a <laughs> lot maybe the proper <laughs> i am a proper so, <laughs> so give more based on what you're earning <clears throat> yeah and less yeah. based on what okay fine mm. and i have always opined that any the better better healthcare systems are the ones that are taxpayer funded okay. and we are there we have just used the model that we have right now mm-hmm. um this conversation of reform mm. um i think parts of it were born in a meeting we had with nhif mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, at some point last year mm-hmm. and we were giving them an opinion of what the industry feels okay we separate claims uh let's have someone to adjudicate disputes mm. you can't be judge jury and executioner mm-hmm. that was what nhif was mm. uh fraud wastage and abuse mm. there was a lot of focus by the fund mm. on that mm. as opposed to service delivery In which fact, is yeah. which is not a bad thing to prevent fraud wastage and abuse yeah. we'll come to that yeah. but it can't be the only focus mm. mm-hmm. we didn't have technical people mm. we only had two degree level medical people what in the fund we, uh, we only had two we degree. only had two that is the a former of NHF. yeah that's a former acting ceo yeah. and the ceo who exited <laughs> so <laughs> wait what <laughs> the <laughs> captain of the ship was, 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 was uh, those are the only degree level uh, people so when uh, simon here who is uh, an obstetrician uh, sends in uh, a claim to be looked at uh, he can't converse with a peer uh, mm. uh, or someone with similar understanding mm. of the science behind what he has written down on mm. paper. Mm. So essentially whoever's reading at the end of it all mm. doesn't have the knowledge to mm. understand why he's billing for certain or recommending exactly. certain. Exactly. So yeah. there was a lot of inefficiency okay. in the system mm. because the eyes cannot see what the mind doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so <laughs> we went to Mango. So <laughs> that that is a problem. Mm. So a lot of inefficiency <laughs> in the claims management. Yes process mm. Mm. and that journey had a lot of human interference yeah, so okay. the attempt to digitize that yeah. process yeah. is very welcome mm. okay what it also does is if you are to take advantage of that digitization mm. right now mm. so most of the businesses in health mm. uh flourish on cash flow mm. absolutely because in health mm. you don't invest today to get it tomorrow mm. 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 Uh, you need the money now for the drug that is required now everything yes yeah, so now, your your, your mm. ops mm. need to be taken care of now yeah. mm. but the re- the return on investment mm. is 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 longer now, yeah. than mm. uh, most other uh, industries Absolutely. and it is important for even the financiers mm. to understand that they mm. do not understand that mm. the matrices they look at mm. are a bit different or they mm. should look at different matrices when when it comes to financing health yeah pack that yeah. we will mm. come to that yeah. together with mm. fraud with mm. the mm. Mm. so if that if that journey is digitized mm. and we can even have uh, our financiers have visibility into that process what it means mm. is if at the point of payment i know mm. a claim past this point is as good as money mm. then i know i have two shillings mm. that i can be paid mm. so the bank can advance me that money and mm. I, can yes. con- i can continue taking care of my 
So we create more bankable businesses mm. in health. Mm. And at the moment we begin to do that, mm. then the slowly the sector becomes where mm. the economy can be revived from. Yeah. When you look at other sectors, they have macroeconomic indicators. Health mm. doesn't. Mm. This is true. Yeah. Mm. When you go to construction, mm. I moved 50 bags of cement. Ma uh, this year next year I've moved yeah. 20 the industry has contracted the But next year if yeah. I move more you mm. can tell mm. but for health what do you look at to tell whether the industry has expanded or contracted do you look at the number of mm. sick people it has mm. seen mm. do you look at the number of uh, do you like do you look at the contact points mm. uh, because there could be preventive contact points which mm. is a good thing yeah. for the yeah. for the sector mm. but you're not able to have indicators mm. that tell you whether there has been expansion or contraction at yeah. a glance in fact let me just pause there because one and it's a conversation at some point um we should have mm-hmm. because even if we look at the current uh, challenges we're having in the system mm-hmm. <coughs> healthcare system mm-hmm. we have the unposted interns mm-hmm. doctors mm-hmm. are on strike mm-hmm. there's all this mm-hmm. sort of backlash around universal health coverage mm-hmm. and ministry of health generally mm-hmm. But then when you have conversations with not the health economists but the people who are at treasury one of the point mm. that always comes out is we do not know how to explain ourselves mm. right because then what how they think it's part of what you're indicating is around macroeconomic mm. policies indicators right as we seem to come with a more social even someone has said a very emotional mm. chip right so if you're sitting at treasury and someone comes and tells you that you should post interns because it is part of just their training that means nothing to me mm. right and so that becomes sort of a gap sometimes and uh, and this is just a note that if we don't have macroeconomic indicators and the people we are working with on the other end who need to release money that's what they rely mm. on how do we bridge that gap as well um two thoughts one mm. is uh money has no feelings mm. this uh, is true it understands yeah. mathematical signs and mm. equations absolutely uh you give you, you put it somewhere mm. it will either come back or not mm. and i think that's what our economists mm. uh, want to hear mm. um i find that a way that a linear way of looking at things because they are supposed to be the enablers mm. of uh, of all other sectors mm. because the entire economy intersects mm. at treasury yes now as health people mm. we must find the value mm in Kenya shillings mm. and quantified mm. of the Kenyans man hour mm. 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 and you must find the value mm. of the average school day for a child yes what is that value mm. now if i'm able to confer you the benefit of an intervention mm. that will add you some more man hours mm. to be a productive citizen mm-hmm. then that is what we used to justify mm. that intervention yes okay mm. and there 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 are simple i mean the best interventions in mm. medicine have, the, has, have been the simplest mm, yes. we've washed hands mm. we've prevented many diseases mm. we stopped mm. open mm. defecation mm. we prevented many diseases yeah. it's those small interventions mm. so mm. if we are able to say that mm. if we able to integrate this sector and digitize it it's mm. going to cost us two shillings mm. Mm. but because of the improved or the reduction in waiting time mm. by an average of two hours mm. so from the two hours mm. we have the, the the system is having a uh, say 20,000 hits yep. multiply by that mm. and then uh, look at the number of productive people because mm. children may not be economically yes. productive mm. Mm. and now extrapolate that data mm. and say these are the man hours we are putting back into the economy mm. and mm. you make you make a simple yes Argument. Uh, argument for it yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. Let me, let me, that's yeah. um a very important point yeah. and um uh, as usual mm. i have to take us back uh, to uh, history <laughs> <laughs> history experience history yeah. Yeah. and um and i'll come back to um the uh, policy period mm. uh, reversing the trend this was the 2000 reversing trend, 2005 yeah. to 2013 yeah. Yeah. where mm. They actually did what team had said mm. and they sat back mm. and said um prior to the kibaki era mm. uh, kibaki was a brilliant economist prior to the uh, mm. kibaki era mm. health was a net expenditure mm-hmm. item mm. at treasury mm. and uh, i see where you're going in terms of the treasury mm. matters so 
they sat back and said, what is it in health that mm. is causing a problem and can we reverse it and mm. called reversing the trend. Mm. And therefore they put a document that was measurable, as you put it. You can actually convert mm. the indicators into money mm. or value mm. uh, uh, items. Mm. And that being measured, health, of course, grew in leaps and bounds. Mm. And uh, by the time um, Kibaki was leaving, mm. health was a net... Um, it was. A it was not a. It was a yeah, contributor, contributor to the, the national revenue. It was revenue. In fact, yeah. part of the national revenue was actually being funded by the mm. generations on health. So health, at a certain point, was making enough money yeah. to such that fund it's, treasury. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the basis on which governors mm. came to say, no, 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 we want these hospitals. Because when they came, yeah. there were centers of mm. money. Yeah. And that was part of the problem mm. in devolution of that. Mm. Come to what the CS of Health has uh, shot herself in the foot mm. by proposing a reduction mm. in the interns' mm. benefits. Mm -hmm. So if we use... Um, Is that the CS of the SRC? Oh, well, uh, well, uh, good, yeah. Uh, That's a good, a good, uh, uh, good point. It's, a, it's, it's, it's an advisory from the SRC, mm. but there advisory. seems to have been a communication we are not privy to. Yes. Mm, to the CS directly, yeah. such that then she could uh -huh. go. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. because yeah. they addressed her. Yeah, yeah. they addressed I think her. There's a letter I've just seen that mm. addressed her. Now, mm. uh, it's neither personalities nor mm, yeah. uh, issues. Now, mm. the, and, and this is what I say I mm. train interns. Mm. And, um, Interns who rotate in mm. the gynecological unit, mm -hmm. for instance, mm. um, one intern for us to qualify mm. them mm. in a period of, let's say, three months, mm. yes. the intern will need to have done on their own mm. about 20 caesarean mm. sections. Yes. Right? So, suppose an intern has done 20 caesarean yeah. sections mm. on their own, which is, um, let's say, 10 caesarean sections mm. a month, yeah. because we are talking of a three-month period. What would be the value at Nairobi Hospital, mm. let's say? Mm. How much would mm. we charge mm. for 10 for caesarean C sections? Yes. Yep. Mm. So, the first caesarean section pays the intern. Mm. That's the salary. Mm. You get the other 10 mm. are benefits to the government. Therefore, mm. if we are, as Tim has said, mm. able to actually put it in value terms, then mm. people stop seeing mm. the salary of the intern yeah. as an expenditure mm. item. We say this one has been paid X but mm. has brought 10X. Mm. You see, yeah. so I, I think that is mm. a good point that mm. we probably need to take up mm. to start demonstrating absolutely value. so that people are not um, making non-state actors the villain, right? Mm. Because yeah, go ahead because <laughs> that's so what you if, if, if yeah. we're able to justify yeah. Yeah. our positions using mathematical models yeah. that are simple to understand, mm. then it begins to make sense. Absolutely. Now. I had said we've changed how the system is acquiring mm. the patient. Mm. We've changed the financing model. Mm. Uh, so the people who can contribute mm. a little more. Yeah. But at the point of care, everyone is, is assured of similar yes. care. Primary, now, yeah. there could be a case for value for money. Mm. Mm -hmm. If my contributions are in the region of mm. a few hundred thousand, mm. yeah. then automatically there's, there's, an, mm. there's, there's an unmet expectation. Yeah, expect more. I would I wouldn't expect more. I would expect quality care. Quality. Okay. I yes, would expect absolutely. I would expect care yeah. that assures me yes. of an increased health expectancy. Uh -huh. Okay. So if I'm going to be alive for the mm. next seventy five years, yes. I hope that with the money I'm investing absolutely. into healthcare, I am assured maybe of sixty, sixty five mm. healthy years. Mm. Mm. Our our bodies are flowed, so at some point yeah. Uh, we mm. expect some manufacturer's yeah. defects to begin to show. Yes. Mm. Um, we've changed the financing model. Yes. We've also changed the referral model mm. through primary care networks. Mm -hmm. We've not given the system some time to adjust. Yes. The system needs some time to adjust so that it mm. can find its level. Mm. Mm. And as it's adjusting, mm. uh, it's very important mm. uh, to, 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 to have feedback from the system mm. Mm. i watch formula one mm. and at the beginning of every season <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, there's testing that happens on mm, those yeah. on those cars yeah. mm. and you will see them rigged up mm. with many sensors yeah. to get feedback on the tracks yeah. and yeah. all those things they will yeah. measure every simple yeah. thing mm. the same should happen to health yeah. 
Exactly. If you look at the history again as Simon has said, mm. during Kibaki's time, his mm. economic council had a doctor, mm. that was Dr. Gakombe mm. and Dr. Uh, Jackie Kitulu and yeah. uh, Dr. Kitulu. Yes. Mm. And uh you can tell the benefits of that. Mm. Yeah. And that time we were able to sort out one public good and that was education. Mm. Yeah. Mm no administration has managed to sort out mm. the other public mm. good which is health, health yeah. and uh, we are seeing now a very deliberate effort mm. to try and do that mm. and i am invested in this because it's uh it's not only the sector i am in mm. but it's one of the things that if we sort out for kenyans mm. then we will li- we will we will case. leapfrog mm. uh a few the markets. journey of yeah. innovation and mm. just learn from people who've done it before and just keep those processes mm. Mm. i usually say if you have access to someone else's experience mm. don't get to class to learn what they've exactly. learned exactly yeah. uh, just, yeah. uh, just someone uh, yeah. 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 Uh, so those are the changes that have are happening mm. to the system mm. and it's important that we give the system some time to mm. adjust yeah. We understand mm. that we we have a lot of debt as a country mm. and uh, there are very deliberate efforts mm. to sort that out. Mm. So it means we are not operating in a Optimum. Mm. in a in a in a in a physical space that yeah. is you have wiggle room. Mm. It is yeah. it, we, we, are we, are, we, are, we are tight. Yeah. We are tight. Are tight. So mm. can government build up to scale as fast as we expect them to? Absolutely not. Who <laughs> is the other person who can? Private sector. private sector so private sector must be given enablers mm. to allow them to mm. build to scale yeah. because we are going to double mm. uh, from the projections that we have seen yes. the number of people who are going to come under coverage mm. now if we are doubling the number of people who are coming under coverage mm. it means that the business exposure mm. uh of the people who are in the provider network mm. space mm. is also going to double so if if there are low payouts or no payouts mm then mm. there's already debt mm. so we are doubling the debt mm. Mm. and i usually say mm. government is automatically a stakeholder because mm. whether we've been paid or not they'll, they'll have taken the taxes yes. mm. right Absolutely. so the kenya knows they, 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 they contributed mm. yeah. so mm. when it comes to be on the f- from the business side from mm. the investor side a mm. mm. uh, government has, has the right of first pay mm. through the taxation system yes. that we have because mm. we, rep- we we report on an accrual mm. basis which again is very punitive. Yeah. So I'll be taxed on money I am mm. not sure yeah. yes. I will ever re- I will ever get. Mm. Right now NHIF in 2017 woke up and closed the mm. uh, the e-claim system mm. they had yes. then. Yeah. 6 billion is inside there. Mm. So you see now it's a conversation of yeah. these are my invoices mm. then they'll say no we don't have these invoices what do you do? In fact even currently mm. um the conversation we are having with brand before mm. yeah mm. Uh, Rupa. Rufa. Yeah. Rufa. Mm-hmm right was that essentially you can understand you've been working for nine months you have all these expenses that you've been meeting mm. because fundamentally mm. your staff you'll have to pay all your suppliers consumables yeah. you have to continue paying your overheads are supposed to be taken care uh, of exactly mm. right so you've been in operational for nine months right or if more for others there's all this which he said was 29 billion mm. that has accrued yeah. and essentially what you're thinking to yourself is that first beyond just financial fast right <clears throat> where are you going to borrow money to continue mm. right but there's also the worry as you're speaking i was thinking to myself i'd be worried as a provider what if during this transition between nhif and shif one day they've said yes liabilities are going to be taken over by sha and so on and so forth but then what if one day during this transition they say 29 billion uh the claims or majority of them mm. cannot be found in the system because we're re-registering we're doing all this so as a provider i'd be worried mm. yeah because then there's no time as you're yeah. saying in terms of these changes to educate not just the public but providers different um players as mm. you're saying there's need to be time so that some of the anxieties that would come in and paranoia that at times someone might claim it is then you know you're walking the journey together as well yes. yeah okay. i mean there is that worry as you say yeah. and uh unfortunately the side we interact a little more is the is, is a commercial aspect mm. of it and that is where we can draw our ready conversations mm. from okay. so even for the public side mm. the reason why you hear these conversations that oh private sector receiving more money eh, mm. it's because mm. they attend to their claims mm. a little more diligently mm. because for them it's a matter of life and death yes Private on the government side that is yeah, and, yeah. No, okay. for 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 private providers yes. on the government side hrh has really been taken care of mm. 
uh, infrastructure is already taken care mm. of. So you are trying to look for little OPEX money here mm. and there, mm. which is at times not difficult to mm. get. Mm. It may not be what you need, but it's not difficult mm. to come by it. Mm. So they do not follow up their claims mm. uh, as diligently. As diligently. Yeah. Okay. So we must find a way of incentivizing the system mm. so that claims follow up is is is, is is increased mm. by the public sector mm. if they increase their claims follow up it will be automatic they see more patients mm. they are going to get paid more mm. for sure so mm. that but is a notion that incentivize because i'd imagine innovative you, you know you must be innovative in your thinking uh one oh. is mm. they're building hospitals left right and center yeah <laughs> why not put doctors plazas inside there mm. so all your consultants who are operating mm. in your county facilities, yeah. mm-hmm. give them some rooms, mm. give them a floor too, mm. right? Mm. But the only right I would put would be mm. ensure that every patient who needs a procedure, mm. it's done in the, mm. in the, in the facility. facility. Sit down and come up with a revenue mm. share agreement. Mm. Mm. And once you've done that, mm. these doctors are going to pile pressure on the, regis- on the mm. records people. Mm. You will not need to put someone on claims. Mm. They will pile up the pressure on the records people because everyone is benefiting mm. from the system mm. which is not a bad thing mm. so if what what would you rather have a whole chicken or mm. have a leg of a mm. cow yeah okay mm. <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> yeah i'd rather have <laughs> a leg of a yeah, cow yeah, exactly. than think i own 100 percent uh, of yes, a chicken absolutely <laughs> yeah i mean I- even before so that we don't even lose people because mm. then <clears throat> there are two conversations right there's the conversation around mm. i think public sector where in many ways it tends to be more about what's politically not correct, what do you call it, palatable, mm-hmm. right? Because us opening facilities left, right, and center is because then someone can go, cut a ribbon, and say, now this facility is going to cover all of you. Mm-hmm. And I'm coming in from a layman perspective, right, before we go into even technicalities. Because then once I see that, I'm there working in my village, I'm like, ah, soon I'll be getting all my services mm-hmm. there. So then that's a quick win, mm-hmm. right? So by the time you bring bringing in room for innovation, uh, that we have moved on to the road and whatnot, right? Because then it, it just happens to be that's bureaucratic processes and whatnot, right? I'm trying to bring back this private sector being the innovator mm. and how then they collaborate with government, right? Because then from the private sector perspective, that's where you can see. I have examples of providers who build massive hospitals. They have the doctor's plaza example, right? And this is the outcome and this is how it has influenced the, um, what do you call it, quality of services, mm. whatever metrics you want to use, right? Then you have this conversation then with the public, right? Is there a reason why that that's, that tends to be a bit because then from the public I can see why let's cut ribbons left right and center private sector has that room to innovate and rapidly at that right mm. and you sitting and having this conversation might be able to forward such um, kind of thinking as well and translation same thing of what you say change management and whatnot mm. why why you have conversations with these people at some point, right? You have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining me I sit here in the studio, that's Buona all I know, it. and Buona people come in. Um, <laughs> I think we have really examples. If yeah. you look at uh, the pro- former provincial yeah. hospitals, yes. uh, they had a memorial wing mm. where mm. It, it was, it was mm. sort of that similar yes. system, yes. it worked. Mm. And if uh, you could afford it, yes. then. You go on that side. Yeah. So that hybrid system has been shown to work. Mm. Two, mm. Uh, dialysis. Mm. When it came to dialysis care, yeah. uh, we had very few public facilities that could offer that. Mm. So the moment when private sector was, br- was brought on board mm. and it w- it could become it became reimbursable yes. by NHIF, you've seen how care yeah. has 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 yeah. peaked. Yeah. S- uh, third example is uh, I'd want to say that ninety percent of the oncology services. Mm south of the sahara mm-hmm. excluding south africa mm. are within 10 kilometer radius from where we are sat down today oh all of them within the capital city concentrated i'm saying 90 percent mm. of that region mm-hmm. so i don't think we have a lineup machine outside mm. of kenya other than i think somewhere in tanzania and it's an old one I'm not sure. um, that's but i'd imagine given the billboards yes. say the first in east africa yeah. and whatnot <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah uh, top of my head mm. uh, i've not seen one i could be wrong mm. but i'm happy to take correction mm. 
and uh, we have we have queues in mm. at KNH. Yeah. Why not go to the to these other facilities? Mm. And it's possible because mm. you see the reimbursement is still the same. Yes. The rate is still the same. Yeah. So mm. why not go? Why not? Why do we, why don't we co- decongest? Yeah. That is one of the avenues through mm. which we can uh, mm. come uh, that that public private. Mm. Uh, Engagement, engagement, collaboration, as we call Dental it. Dental care is also mm. one of the simplest ways of... Yeah. Yeah, because private sector is able to invest mm. and uh, we are happy to take uh, uh, reimbursement that will allow us to recoup that mm. uh, money. Mm. Uh, and that's one of the other examples that mm. are readily available. Mm. Private sector also is happy to have those conversations mm. on how do we ensure that to team yeah <laughs> how do we ensure that those programmatic mm. uh disease like mm. hiv tuberculosis yeah. malaria chronic disease now yeah. lines yeah, yeah <coughs> are now mainstreamed mm. into private sector mm. donor funding is mm. reducing we are now a low middle right, income so. country mm, yeah. and we must have a faced we mm. we are now facing down Mm. uh donor mm. funding We're winding up a lot of the programs yes so how do we bring these people who mm. are on donor funded program mm. disease lives mm. into mm. into care yeah that's a conversation you must begin to have yes what that dictates is mm. there's to be a lot of transparency between the sector mm. uh, <laughs> between private and yeah. and public public and uh, there has to be a lot of data sharing yeah if a death occurs in a private facility a maternal mm. death mm. We'll report it. Mm. It is reportable, but it just ends at that level. It's been reported. That that's data it. does not come up to the regulator. Mm. That data does not reach out to. I don't. I, mm. I don't know that it gets to the ministry level, uh, but mm. it's, it's it's largely mm. domiciled at county, at county level, mm. uh, because that mm. is the. F- we 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 still in, we we still practice a lot of. Yeah. uh the pre devolution mm. reporting counter books and uh, the mechanisms. Okay. So mm. we. If, if if we're able to share that data yeah. i would dare say we mm. may have facilities mm. that have better quality uh practices than some of the big hospitals that you know i would agree on some matrices I would agree. Yeah. so without sharing that data mm. it's it's impossible mm. to know mm. and mm. without data it's a room it never happened mm. so there has to be a very deliberate conversation on mm. how are we sharing data mm, yes. and what can we see and what mm. is this data telling us mm. Uh, that is one of the things that I think uh, private, private sector, sector could yeah. could could, mm. could show. Mm. Uh, what was the other question? Um, <laughs> Let I, me just jump yeah. in before mm. there. So, mm. um, having been uh, the old block mm. in the room, mm. I think mm. um, but a large part of where I have reached mm. now mm. is as a result of uh, working in both public and private mm. sector. Mm. And uh, the way I look at it is that they were totally complementary. Mm. Um, first, when you are in the public sector, you are underpaid, mm. and therefore, when what is what is underpayment? Uh, inability to meet your needs mm. um, uh, with the pay mm. that you are actually getting. It is That's not linked so to the amount of work you're doing. In fact, it's, it's not linked that. to the amount of work. It should be linked to the amount of work you're That's doing. The 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 That's the, the point, and that yeah. comes to yeah. my next point yeah. Yeah. that. Um, we have never addressed mm. uh, what is my value vis-a-vis exactly. the work you do. So yeah. to, so speak, whatever the parameters, there are many parameters in terms of that. There is responsibility, there is mm. linked. And therefore, normally you'll hear, oh, those people are paid and mm. they're not working. But we ask, and I, this has always been my baseline, mm. what is my value mm. in yeah. terms of, if I'm saying I'm a consultant of obstetric mm. and gynecology, Mm. and maybe you want to tie me to this institution mm. and say i have no problem mm. let's calculate yes. how much you need to pay me and mm. over that time it's known mm. that what is paid in the public sector is not uh in quotes mm. enough for you to say you sit there mm. and you stay there for but mm. nevertheless medicine is um um the art of medicine mm. is about doing mm. and practice mm. the more you do the better mm. so over and above the public sector suppose mm. you're working in both and uh, a lot of times you'll find people who work in both mm. the skill level so to speak is higher for mm. two reasons one public sector has numbers mm. you get mm. where for instance i trained in machakos mm. i used to even in one call i could do 10 cesarean mm. sections mm. 10 in one call yeah. you get then I used to uh, also work in a private setting. Mm. 
uh, then Nairobi Women's mm. Hospital. A Nairobi Women's Hospital. So my development as a person at Machakos District Hospital, I'm delivering mm. 10 mm. women. Nairobi women are not delivering 10 mm. women. But that w- one woman who I deliver mm. becomes a good client of mine who in future mm. is a source of mm. income, so to speak. So um, And then you're paid, mm. let's say, for that. Yeah. Then there is also how mm. women are treated in mm. the private setting. Mm. You see, uh, when I went to Manchakos District Hospital, the treatment of mm. women was catastrophic. Yes. You know, people yeah. are being beaten. Then I come to this other side, and mm. I'm wondering, oh, mama, mm. mama. Oh, now mm. You get, so my skill transfer, mm. you know, you start training uh, on human, mm. uh, you start training the people in the public sector. Because if you only worked in that public sector, you may think it is normal mm. to beat women during delivery mm. and all. But when you see it on this side, then you transfer, then you say, mm. no, mm. this is not how women are treated. Yeah. yeah. The other aspect is, for instance, and mm. I'll just use that as an um, equipment. They are in the year 2001, mm. there was laparoscopy equipment in Nairobi women. Mm. To date, there is no laparoscopy women at Machakos District Hospital. Mm. So the laparoscopic skills I learned mm. that I use mm. I learned in this private setting yep. while working in both. So and I'll yep. finally give you the last mm. example. My mm. first patient mm. in Isiolo District Hospital, where mm. I went seven years mm. later mm. as a gynecologist mm. now, was a young lady, yes. 24-year-old lady who had blocked tubes mm. in Isiolo. Mm. And uh, she needed her tubes mm. opened. And for me, the quality mm. of care mm is laparoscopy yeah so i sent her to nairobi for laparoscopy mm. and she was pregnant the next mm. month mm. to date she is my friend but i could have if i was you know i didn't have mm. that mm. The, you say the eye only knows uh, yeah, what uh, you, see you get it. so yeah. that synergy what so we if we measure the impact for mm. instance mm. me having worked at nairobi women's and then seen laparoscopy and said yeah this yes. is the way to go mm. and seven years later this woman mm. comes and i see her in a rural those mm. rural clinics eh? mm. and i tell her by the way this is not the place if we do open you'll never get pregnant mm. so go tonight and then she got we measure the impact but mm. how did i change her life yeah. how do you put that in money terms mm. you get true mm. i mean i it, think uh, yeah uh in the unfortunate event i ever found myself to be a governor <laughs> in the unfortunate, in the unfortunate. What, do you, what do you mean unfortunate <laughs> <laughs> I think they did a very uh, stressful yeah. life. Yeah, uh, we're already <laughs> campaigning for Waziri. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I think they did a very stressful life. Yeah. Yeah. But in, a, in, in that unfortunate inti- yeah. uh, event, yeah. mm. I would pick doctors actually who intersect between the yeah. sectors. The two sectors. I, I would agree. actually ensure my doctors are intersecting. Yes. So that one, you can have that skill transfer. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we should humanize care. Mm. Yeah. I hate it when we begin to have conversations of healthcare for resource limited settings. Mm. Uh, Poor medicine for poor people. Mm. That is, it's it's just bad. Mm. I will repeat this again and I make it a point to a, anywhere where people mm. can hear me. Mm. When we are buying guns mm. to protect our VIPs, yes. when we are mm. buying guns for a policeman to mm. go uh, take care of our security, mm. we don't buy guns for resource limited settings. We, we go for best in class. Mm. Mm. Uh, there was an uproar mm. when one of the arms of government mm. bought a 2024 vehicle. <laughs> for their boss. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Best in class. Mm-hmm. An armored vehicle. Yes. Uh, our politicians, what is the first thing they get when mm. they get into parliament? Mm. A grant. Uh, uh, yeah. And what for do they cars. go for? They go for best mm. in class. Mm. So why are we having conversations of mm. uh, medicine for resource limited? Mm. We, we want to cut corners with health. I mean, I mean if, if uh, well, it's, it's not <laughs> necessarily cutting corners, no, 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 right? No, 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 no it's it's, it's no, not it's cutting, cutting corners. corners. It is Wait. cutting corners. Why Wait. should we have it's a cutting. conversation on? Oh yeah. Mm. You see the scenario he's described. Mm. Why is there no laparoscopic tower mm. in some of these facilities? Mm. Yet, just 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 say in a cabinet meeting mm. at county level, mm. you want to do a road. Mm. No one. Everyone is like, okay, because there's yeah. an equal chance of what? Mm. Of a tender. Yeah. No, but fundamentally it goes to two points, I think, right? Mm-hmm. One, packaging. I'm, I keep insisting on packaging, and this is my bias on it's well and good for you to have rigorous mm-hmm. research data points that you and I can understand, mm-hmm. right? But if the decision makers do not understand and do not use that, then we have a problem, no, right? Our problem is with Kenya, yeah? 
and I will say and this. And the entire country <laughs> that no, has a, uh, because uh, uh, uh-huh. our, our people uh, must be taught uh, to know better. Yeah. Okay, Correct. so that's now around civic education and whatnot. But we, we, and you see, that yeah. is what mm. the politicians prey on. Yes, but because then... Because yeah. it is our duty to mm. ensure that our people mm-hmm. know better mm. and then they'll want better. But the and the moment they want better, to do it because... And the moment they want better, yeah. mm. then it becomes automatic. Those are some of the things that mm. our politicians must take care of. They mm. have made our people mm-hmm. look at health mm. as the a other favor. thing. As, mm. a favor. It's a favor. A favor. as a favor. It's a favor for us to open a yeah. facility for you and It's a favor. Not. Health okay. is not a favor. It is Fair. a right. Fair. Yeah. Now, as part of, because going back to the role of the private sector, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And again, I always sit back from a layman's perspective, yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. then what, what will happen from our end will be that, one, all we know is, as you said also, private sector is for profit it's all about money 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 right yeah. so then they're not really seeing the role in all of this right and remember you have already as part of the description of what the politician wants is that the citizen is not empowered enough educated enough to ask for more right so that's the citizenry you're working mm-hmm. with right and we know it's not uh the politician to then say we want to educate them because mm. why are they going to do it they see no value there's no there's nothing in it for them in fact they want the citizenry to remain in that mm. same state right so then if all of us are meant to be working hand in hand right mm. complementary we're not competing mm. and we know it's a factor of trust it's a factor of um rebranding so to speak so that then we're not non-state act we are non-state actors but people have trust right then at what point does the a private sector come in as part of that role in terms of education, right? Mm-hmm. In terms of that, then ensuring that me as Diana Wangari Wagitao, right, who's an unmedic, knows that, you know what, this is what I should be asking for, right? In this UHC, where does the private sector come in? Now, uh, we need to score mm. performance. Mm-hmm. Okay, right? so score performance. We need to score performance. <laughs> and reward, <laughs> mm. best practice. Yeah. Reward so, best practice. I have a facility. Mm-hmm. Uh, the indicators are known. Yeah. Okay. And one of the quick wins would be through SHIF. Mm-hmm. Uh, my facility has a low rejection rate on claims. Mm-hmm. Let it be known. Let us have a way of making people know that. Yes. Uh, my facility has good outcomes. Mm. I Maybe I'm mm-hmm. complicating two out of ten yeah. cesarean sections. Mm. Uh, outcome-based care. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you come to my facility mm-hmm. with a head injury, there mm-hmm. is maybe a 60% chance yeah. that you'll work out mm-hmm. functional. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So those are some of the things we should look at mm-hmm. and make it known to the public so mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. those who are doing the right thing mm-hmm. are encouraged yeah, to do the right, right thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then those who are doing things that we do not agree with, mm-hmm. then they are known and we either weed them out mm. or put them on performance improvement plans. <laughs> and that <laughs> now comes to fraud, wastage, and abuse. Yeah. Yeah. In it fact, a, yes, exactly. It is a two-way street. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It just mm. doesn't happen in isolation. Yeah. Yeah. We have people on the provider network side. Yes. And we have people on the other side who are mm. to be incentivized to release yes. payment. Mm. Yes. So those two people, yeah. we shouldn't condone them in the system. Because mm-hmm. the cost of having them mm. there mm-hmm. is just too high. Yeah. Because unlike... Uh, let me just say lawyers because mm. that's the nearest profession mm. our mistakes don't go to jail mm-hmm. our mistakes yes. go to the grave yes. yeah. right okay and yeah. that is it's 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 horrible yes. that if i would sit down and pen down a policy mm. that would cause someone to die mm. that should be treasonous mm. yeah mm. It, 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 should, it should be second to treason yes yes and we have our leaders who who leave this country mm. go to other countries mm. to benchmark they will take visits mm, yes, and yes. they will see better things happen mm. but when you sit down to do a policy mm. you're giving me a nonsense document mm, mm. so what yeah. what what are we doing yeah so we must score yeah and we must ensure that this data is available for mm. people to see mm. then it will be automatic mm. people will want to go where there is mm. Mm. better care better where, care. where yeah. Innately, people are selfish. Mm. They want the best for themselves. Mm. So let them let us let let them know where the best is. Mm. So then, essentially, um, so that again, people mm. are not lost, right? Mm-hmm. What I'm hearing is this need for visibility, right? And beyond the visibility and sharing of mm-hmm. data, so that we know what's happening, mm-hmm. there's also an element of 
let's all sit down and make people accountable. And yeah. it's not accountable about money as we always are, the mm. call is always, because even with the fraud exposes that you get, it's always about this money has been lost or these facilities were found to mm. engage in fraudulent behavior and it caused a lot of drama. Then we forget about the nitty gritties yeah. in them. Mm. So then aside from visibility, what we also need is an element of, this is the... Um, scoring sheet what do they used to call it the thing the marking list mm. right so th in the marking list it's not just money was lost mm -hmm. it is how did they perform if a baby was lost today why who what mm. all those things even those the practitioner because if it was someone exactly. who was cutting across all those facilities uh, exactly. we identify him as a problematic exactly and we're able yeah. to write i mean mm. there are all these documentaries mm. you see on netflix about mm. a nurse who was able yeah. to move and kill mm. you know it's yeah. tracing right, right. So then essentially what we're saying is if I am the layman here, me as a Kenyan citizen, maybe I don't need to worry about the details so much. What I need to be able to say is whatever you agree on, we're going to have a checklist, right? And so this checklist and scoring, which uh, will be advised based on um, some subject matter ex expert, then we are able to be checking. We have a Kamkunji every so often and we all sit and whatnot right and so it's not and i'm not saying it's the citizen to do that but appointed bodies should yeah. do that right because then that's what i'm imagining yourself kigondo should be doing in these conversations that you guys keep having without inviting me i hear the we meetings across people. town <laughs> i am just saying studio it's, uh, people have numbers but i'm not called anyway but it's okay but essentially <laughs> Convening, eh? Yeah. No, anyway, but <laughs> um, yeah, you can tell uh, Mr. President, yeah. <laughs> hey, CEO, <laughs> Waziri, soon governor, all yeah. this, anyway, mm. but. Essentially, if you're working in a professional body, association mm. of any sorts, mm. right? Because you have the responsibility, I think, to have these conversations, right? But then coming back to uh, the other point around financing, which was going to be my question, right? Is it that in many ways, private se sector is hindered based on not financing but who are your investors right mm -hmm. which yeah your investors right because then if you're talking about financing for healthcare as it might be in more policy circles by investment in healthcare right based on that is it that then the people who give the money also need an awareness that you know what let's not just constantly push on our return on investment to be 2x of whatever, mm. 4X or what, mm. right? Because as you said, also, it's a factor of, it's more long-term, it's mm. more patient capital mm. than mm. anything else. You're not going to put up a facility today and expect that if you're invested 100 million, you're going to get 400 million mm. within five-year yeah. time frame, right? Because the inputs and all this, it's a different dynamic that mm. requires a certain understanding. Would you say from a private sector perspective, there are limitations also based on why how you're financed are that those limitations so that then you can see also there's some of these rules that we might not be able to take care because it's the role of government there's the role of private sector is that a limitation um yes it's mm. it's, it's it's a limitation mm. but up to a certain point mm. uh we when healthcare businesses are beginning they mm. tend to begin with individual mm. capital mm. Mm, family capital mm. Uh, and then it becomes blended financing where mm. you walk into it's a financial, like startups. <laughs> yeah, walk into a financial institution mm. and then get mm. some money mm. and then now grow the journey. Mm. So the transition from uh, that kind of capital mm. to investor capital mm. means you must show some mm. investor readiness. Yes, and that includes mm. governance. Mm. It includes prudent financial practices mm. and such like things. Mm. Now, I said most of the businesses in health are SMEs. Mm. And most SMEs, if I'm to look at the profile of SMEs in the country, mm. are owned by youth and women. Mm. So I'd want to extrapolate and me, and mm. the same would be mm. for health. Yeah. And the barrier to accessing finances mm. is almost always there. Mm. And it's because mm. for SMEs, mm. governance practices and good financial practices mm. are cost points. Mm. They are not efficiency points mm. like for big corporates. Mm. Because for big corporates, if I have good financial practices, mm. those are efficiency points for me. Yes. Mm. But for 
small businesses mm. they become cost points mm. why do i have to have a board meeting every other day mm. every quarter it's, going to cost me. <laughs> it's, it's costing mm. me money why do i need to have an auditor come mm. why do i need to have a budget why mm. need why do i need to do budget versus actuals why mm. do i need to you know yeah. uh, have uh, someone approve my payments mimi mimi ni pesa ni yangu absolutely mimi ndo kusema i'm going of this facility uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so you've seen a beautiful girl there as a known of a facility mm. you want to take her out and say give me 100000 yeah uh, you call it everyone you're like umera give me 100000 eh i need to go out with this beautiful lady you yeah. know <laughs> and and then and, and Uh, when, when, when when doctors like Simon mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. been, do a cesarean yeah. section yeah. and they want to be paid in cash yeah? yes. you know we we usually joke and say that uh, yeah. one of the few things as a man you could ever hear is mm. it a direct transfer mm. and since i don't know what time this show will air i can't mm. say the other one yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, family friendly show <laughs> yeah so we'll keep it that way yes. so you know those, those those are the things that now become a yeah. uh, problem i'm paying school fees for my children from absolutely. the same account that is running my business mm. so i am a risky mm. person to invest in yes, absolutely. so that investor readiness is mm. something that uh, becomes now a barrier mm. um so how capital behaves mm. in healthcare mm. in terms of cost mm. and tenure mm. should be graded differently yes and there is a conversation at pact mm. we've already done fraud waste mm. and abuse mm. When it comes to healthcare, mm. financials should look at different matrices yes. or rather we encourage them to look In at examples. different. Mm. One, how many doctors mm. do I have here? Mm. Am I able to pay them well? Mm. If mm. the answer is yes, mm. it means I have a good case load. Mm. If I have many specialists, mm. it means I have a good case mix. Mm. Mm. I am a bankable institution. Mm. Mm-hmm. In my pharmacy what is my order refill rate? Mm. Mm. If it's above a certain percentage mm. point, mm. then it means there we are yeah. moving uh, products. Yes. Uh, and that becomes another mm. if maybe say for example i mean oncology mm. care mm-hmm. how many active people do i have on radiotherapy and mm. chemotherapy yes. then mm. Mm. how many people am i seeing mm. on dialysis mm. Mm. you see those, those are the things we should begin to look at mm. where is my business situated mm. do i have a big enough catchment mm. area mm. how are my patients coming in mm. you know yeah. so and that is how we encourage business mm. people mm. to 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 keep to keep data that's yes. that's, that's the kind of data we encourage mm. them to keep mm. Uh, and it will also translate I suppose even when you talk about performance contracts and mm-hmm. whatnot it's something similar that yeah. could be adopted yeah. in public facilities mm. and then I think sometime Kigondo mentioned that as, at a certain point if you are to become revenue generating it's a way of thinking mm. that you have to get your staff into so that what they're looking at it's not I clocked in and clocked yeah. out and I saw patients five of them or there's five of them mm. there are certain metrics that mm. have to be looked at okay uh, Uh, now those are the things you begin to look at mm. uh the other thing would be is my is my operation digitized mm, mm. because if it is digitized mm. then i have good checks and balances yeah. uh there is less human interference so mm. it means that if i was to give this person money mm. loss of revenue is mm. this already mitigated yes so those are the things i would encourage financiers to look at mm. and if you encourage the sector to to move in that direction mm. then the barriers that we have identified when it comes to acquisition of capital yes. and Uh, additional capital coming in mm. begin to disappear mm. absolutely mm. i mean we could first uh, don't forget us uh, when you become governor <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> important things governor. important things governor. first <laughs> no no i like myself <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly i, I think like it's myself. a conversation we yeah. need to continue having it, it, right it needs, it needs to happen it, it needs because yeah. we need to as you see there are, there are multiple pillars that we could literally take and have conversations and multiple conversations on But if you are to summarize for us three points mm. in terms of the role of private sector or what the private sector or what even uh, public sector rather mm. could learn or you're open to having this kind of conversation right mm. as we're rolling out universal health coverage what are the three three to five points uh, you might have you it is not a journey you achieve mm. alone yes. mm. whether as government mm. or as private sector mm. it has to be together mm. And the first time I had all of government approach I was really happy mm. and I really hoped that uh, it would uh, percolate down mm. to health mm. because that is where it's needed the most mm-hmm. actually yes. because all other sectors sort of interact mm. and intersect uh with health. Mm. Uh the second thing is these conversations need to leave the room. Mm. Uh, <laughs> This is so true. Yeah. Isn't that what I've been saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
the conversations need to leave the room i have been in meetings at the ministry of health and fantastic conversations are happening we just need to message a bit better we need to understand to make more nature understand if you call me i'll help you in the messaging but carry on i don't i don't work for the ministry there's a role they give me at kmpdc that i i do uh but beyond that i think uh, <laughs> someone has more seats to them than i do <laughs> anyway, uh-huh. yeah mm-hmm. so conversations need to leave mm-hmm. the room mm-hmm. secondly mm-hmm. we must know better mm-hmm. to want better mm-hmm. and get better mm. You must know better. Yeah. We must know we better. We must know better. Really? Mm. We uh, must. It, it breaks my heart mm. when, um, I mean, when you when, when you look at people contributing money mm. uh, for, for loved ones because they are sick. Even and for doctors themselves. Even well, for doctors. Yeah. We, we barely can afford some mm. of the services mm. that we give. Mm. Uh, so it, it breaks my heart. It and <coughs> we mustn't, we, we must divorce ourselves mm. from the lessons mm. how we've learned our lessons mm. as a country mm. we've learned our lessons through tragedy mm. yeah. okay mm. before multipartism was allowed what happened mm. right yeah. before we could decide we need to improve our security mm. 1998 mm. happened mm. uh 2017 was a dark mm. period for us mm. so we must we must run away from learning mm. lessons like that the hard way mm. the hard way mm. Mm. If there's a classrooms where lessons can be taught better and faster, mm. why not attend it? Yeah. <laughs> take the <laughs> notes. Yeah, and just take just the read. notes mm. and, and, and yeah. read. You yeah. know, yeah. to so we are we are saying there is not much money to invest, mm. but we want to learn lessons the hard way. Mm. Let's not learn. Let, let's, let us not mm. learn lessons the hard way. Mm. And then uh, finally is we can't have poor medicine for poor people. Mm. I have it's a mm. it's a bad it's a bad way to look. It's an unfair way mm. okay. to look at things. Mm. And private sector is here to ensure that those enablers are made better mm. and responsibly. So mm. I must insist on that. Yeah. It must be in a very responsible mm. way, mm. where we weed out uh, unscrupulous people. Mm. And the ones who are doing better are rewarded, mm. and we also learn from them. Mm. Yes. So I think um, <coughs> final, uh, final just ones. a final one mm. in terms mm. of where looking at private mm. uh, healthcare mm. in context. Yeah? Uh, the first thing we need to know is that there's no private patient mm. Mm. and there's no public patient. That's important. I think if point. you start your journey from the patient just wants to come, get quality service, mm. and get better, mm. where they get it. They should have that mm. quality service mm. uh, w- wherever they get it. Mm. So I think um, a part of the thinking we need to move out of is that thinking mm. of dividing mm. care, yeah. so to speak. We should actually aim at improving everywhere. Mm. And also, um, we must know a limitation. You must know that maybe mm. sometimes one place cannot have everything. Mm, yes. And uh, I've given my examples. Mm. So I think let's let's look at it from that lens. And I think from the point of view of doctors, mm. uh, private healthcare has really assisted them as individuals and has, uh, if I would put it, mm. propped up the public sector mm. as AIA, mm. appropriation in aid. Mm. That mm. Uh, was what I used to cluster. So mm. some of these things are mm. not measurable. Mm not measurable mm. and um uh, i think maybe if we start trying to describe them and mm. measuring them mm. then you will realize that uh, one can't live without the other mm. Mm. Th- this is true i mean the conversation has been about the role of private sector but i think what you are coming out uh, of this conversation is really that it's not a competition, right? Mm, it's, it's not, not yeah. it's not private versus public. Mm, mm, it's mm, really mm. not when it's you're collaborative. S- it's collaborative. It's collaborative. When you're sick, the nearest health facility won't matter whether it's private or public. Mm, mm. And that's not it. And the other point is you as the citizen, essentially, you need to start asking tough questions, yeah. right? Ask the question because fundamentally it is you who will be receiving the services. Thank you for being with us and join us next time on the One Health Lens Podcast. Mm-hmm.